This video is part of a series of 16 presentations by Crystal Witten, Ph.D., based on her book, Country Living. See the video description for availability. The free videos can be found as parts 361 to 376 at www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. I want to talk about my friend Heather Martinson. She's a dentist. We've been friends since the fifth grade. And she recently has gotten into diagnosing people based on what she sees in their mouth. And she'll do a full mouth x-ray and she can diagnose certain things going on, cancer, maybe some heart disease going on. And now she's making referrals. So people, so some of the early diseases that we get actually show up first in our mouth. And so this is why it's so important uh, to get in to see a dentist at least once a year. And we're actually finding, and this, it doesn't show up very well, but this is a pretty healthy mouth, uh, healthy gums. You want gums to be pink, not red. You want the gums to be, you know, covering the teeth like they should be, not re receding. I met a friend in Tennessee a couple of weeks, uh, maybe about a month or so ago, and he happened to mention um, he hadn't been to the dentist in 30 years. And I'm like, wow, you don't know what could be going on, you know, if it's been that long. So I encouraged him to go see a, a dentist. But 90%, up to 90% of all diseases, systemic type diseases, are evident in the mouth before they're evident anywhere else in the body. So it's really important to have a clean mouth. Um, in fact, as a mother, you can pass on your bad bacteria to your children. If you're kissing your children, you're, when you're exchanging saliva, you're actually, you, it's potential that you could pass on those bacteria. These bacteria can get into the heart and cause something called endocarditis. Uh, they can cause inflammation in the carotid artery that could lead to a stroke, all from not keeping your mouth clean. So God wants us to be clean people and at least brush twice a day, if not three times a day. If you have a mouth that has infections and has uh, some issues, I actually recommend brushing before you eat and after you eat because before you eat, if you don't brush before you eat and you have these bad bacteria in your mouth and you eat, what are you doing with them? You're swallowing them and now they're going to your stomach and they might make it into the small intestine and that could mess with your microbiome. And so it's very important to keep your mouth very clean. It can cause periodontitis. That's in a pregnant mother that's linked to having a low birth weight baby. That's not a good thing. Um, it can cause pneumonia. Certain bacteria in your mouth can get into your lungs and that can cause pneumonia. So again, if you have an elderly parent or relative, you wanna make sure they're brushing their teeth because a lot of times they might go a day or two without brushing their teeth. So it's really important to keep a clean mouth. And diabetes, um, your oral health, the poor oral health may actually lead to diabetes. Um, it can make our body's resistance go down and can cause um, more frequent and severe diabetes in people that already have diabetes. Um, and research shows that people who have gum disease have a more difficult time controlling their diabetes. So if you're a nurse, do we have any nurses here? So you need to make sure that your, your patients are keeping their mouth clean. Uh, it's really important, HIV AIDS, oral problems like mucosal lesions. A lot of times in AIDS, they'll have sores all over their mouth, um, on the sides of their mouth, on their tongue, even around their lips. Osteoporosis is a bone weakening disease. And one of the first bones that shows osteoporosis is your jawbone. So you start losing your bone density here first and you'll see people's face shape as they get older. It actually, excuse me, it actually changes. And um, we also see worsening oral health 
linked to the progression of Alzheimer's. So people that have Alzheimer's, it's really critical that they brush their teeth and have a clean mouth. And so, and, and it's hard, a lot of times they're not very cooperative. Other conditions uh, linked to oral health, this is on the Mayo Clinic website, rheumatoid arthritis, certain cancers, immune system disorders, dry mouth, what was that, Sogren's uh, syndrome. So tell your dentist, find a really good dentist that does a full mouth x-ray, and they're really looking at your entire oral cavity and not just a few teeth. Um, and actually in my book, I think on Thursday we might go over it, but there are some formulas, some formulations for cleaning your teeth, keeping your mouth clean. Um, I, I have a bottle of 97 cents in the US of hydrogen peroxide. And every time I brush my teeth, I dip my toothbrush in hydrogen peroxide and I scrub my teeth with it and spit it out and I let it just bubble for about 30 seconds. And that oxygen in the hydrogen peroxide will actually kill the bacteria it comes into contact with. And it also sanitizes my toothbrush. It's, um, it's 3%. It's not food grade. It's, I'm not swallowing it or anything. It's just kind of dipping my brush in, brush my teeth. Just any bacteria that might be there, I didn't catch brushing. I think it does. Once you've been doing hydrogen peroxide brushes like that, it doesn't foam anymore. So you know you've gotten most of the bacteria out of your mouth. But when you first start doing it, it will foam quite a bit because you're catching the bacteria in there. But it whitens your teeth too. If you, if you keep it on there long enough, it will definitely do that. So daily oral care should take five to 15 minutes. So just, just decide to commit the time, you know, five minutes. This means you brush your teeth, you floss your teeth, you dip the hydrogen peroxide, you brush again. Um, it's gonna kill the bad bacteria that might be in there. This is super critical for our health and it's such a simple thing that we can do. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm walking around my house brushing my teeth for about five, I mean, it gets to the point where you have to spit it out. <laughs> but um, and I, I mean, I hate to talk about stuff like this, but it, it, it is important. As a nutritionist, um, I do a pretty thorough physical exam when I examine people and I start in the mouth. So I can tell a lot of deficiencies. I can tell a B vitamin deficiency, a, a, all, almost all the B vitamins I can diagnose by looking at your mouth. Um, an Adventist invented the water pick. So it's to clean your mouth below the gum line. So the gingival tissue is your gum tissue and you wanna get anything kind of that's gone into that. A lot of us, you know, have, you know, as you get older, you get some receding gums going on but it's very important. The other thing I tell people is you only floss the teeth you wanna keep. So, uh, you know, flossing is very important. Um, very, very important. And I think uh, the water pit goes a long ways towards doing the flossing work. Something that I bought in Texas at the antique store of all places, probably about 15 years ago, was a dental tool. And it's a sharp little pointy thing and it has a little hook in it. And I probably two or three or four times a week, I take that and I scrape all the white stuff out of the front area, the top, back. So, you know, that way between visits to the dentist, I'm still kind of cleaning in between the teeth. Sometimes flossing doesn't get all of that, but if you have a sharp instrument, it costs me a dollar. You know, one dollar, I think I can afford a dollar. Now you don't want little kids to be using it because it's very sharp. It will poke a hole in your gums. Um, so you have to kind of figure out how to do it. And I've poked myself several times, but um, I had someone ask me to do something about some like blog about the skin. So I decided to research it. And I found that the pH of our skin is 3.5 to 5.5. And I thought, that is so interesting. It's very acidic. That's pretty acidic. So when I'm touching someone, someone hands me their kid and their kid's a mess. And I don't know if the kid just peed or pooped and I'm holding, holding it. 
But you know what? This acidic mantle that covers our skin protects us from germs. And to me, that's amazing. But what does washing with soap do to that protective mantle? It removes it and it takes 90 minutes for that acid mantle to return. So take just take that for what it's worth to you. Um, if you're gonna be washing your hands a lot, maybe we should be wearing some gloves. So we're not constantly washing our acid mantle off. But if you're, you know, when you put makeup on, you completely change all of that mantle. Um, and again, your pores are holes that go into your body. We have pores all over our skin. So whatever you put on your skin, where is it gonna go? It goes inside your body. Is that something that you really think about? So all of these soaps and shower, whatever they are, showers, liquid things, um, lots of artificial ingredients in there. And as you put that on, even sunscreen, we have found out that sunscreen can be bad for us. And maybe that's causing some of the skin cancers that are going around um, because people can get skin cancer and they say, I've worn sunscreen my whole life. I never go out in the sun. And these are the people that are, some of the people that are getting skin cancer. So you have to wonder. So the skin's pores, they're large enough to allow water, minerals, and even toxins to escape. And I'll tell you what, the summertime is a perfect time to start detoxing because you know, it's hot. It's a great time to sweat. If you don't have your own sauna, get outside in the middle of the afternoon and try doing some yard work. You're gonna lose a lot of sweat. And people that actually get into saunas and they sit on a white towel, a lot of times there's red, there's a red dye that's on their towel. What do you think that red dye is? It's coming from inside the box, it comes inside to the out. It's iron. So people with high iron levels, one way they can detox from high iron is the iron actually sweats out of their skin. And so it's really, a, it's an important route of elimination. If you have high elevated iron, iron can be a problem. Too much iron um, can cause something called the Fenton reaction. So has anyone heard of the Fenton reaction? Okay, I know it's a scientific term. It's a big word, but I'm gonna tell you what it does. The Fenton reaction is highly, it, it happens if, if you oxidize an, a molecule of iron, that's the Fenton reaction, it destroys whatever it's next to. It destroys it. And I have a theory about Parkinson's. I think what happens in Parkinson's is when iron gets into the brain, it's very reactive. So the brain does what? It tries to sequester the iron and it sequesters the iron in this thing called the globus pallidus. The globus pallidus is white when you're a child, but as we get older and iron accumulates in our brain, it gets into, the, it accumulates in our body, it gets into our brain, it, it, the globus pallidus starts collecting the iron and it's like a storage unit. It just stacks it up in three dimensions. It stacks up the iron. When you get too much iron in your system and it can't, the globus pallidus can't take any more iron. This is my theory. I believe it releases the iron and that release of the iron damages the part of the midbrain that controls movement. And that's when we get diseases like Parkinson's. So it's, so iron is very, getting, getting out here and sweating and running is really a good thing because we're getting rid of any excess iron. And we may not have excess iron today, but I may eat something that has a lot of iron. I may eat a lot of raisins tomorrow that have a lot of iron and maybe more iron than I need. And so I may need to sweat after that and get rid of some of that iron. So your body is never the same. And I'm not saying anything against raisins. I love raisins. But, um, but all I'm saying is that our body is never the same. So anytime you can take the opportunity to sweat, uh-oh, what happened? Um, anytime we can take the opportunity to sweat, I think it's a good idea. And I know you men sweat a lot, right? 
And the men probably have higher iron because women have menstruation. We lose iron once a month uh, through blood loss. So we don't really need to worry about too much iron usually until uh, menopause. But certainly uh, sweating is a good way to detox. So let's, let's get back to bathing. So when you bathe, bathing actually removes any toxins that have come out of your skin. And it's excellent. And that's why if you work out at the gym, you don't want to go home and go to bed. Why? Because you have all that sweat. Any toxins that came out of your body, you just took them to bed with you. Um, <laughs> So you want to shower, get rid of those toxins. It's really important. This is why we want to shower every day. Even if you haven't done a lot of hard work, your skin is still eliminating toxins. So it's good to, to take a shower every day. Bathing opens up the pores, it removes dirt, it removes toxins, and it returns normal functions to our body. Um, so it's a really good thing. Showers clean us up, wake us up, charge us up, and boost our serotonins. I have a girlfriend, she has two kids, and when her son got into puberty, he was depressed. And she would tell me he spends 45 minutes in the shower. And she didn't understand that. And I, the way I understand it is, remember we talked about yesterday how showers are like a waterfall, waterfalls are serotonergic. He was just trying to get his serotonin up to a normal level. So I want to just take a quick tangent back onto serotonin. I think I didn't mention this yesterday. So kids have 200% the serotonin of adults. That's why they're out there laughing. I mean, kids think everything is funny. They're always, it's hilarious. And they're fun to listen to, right? I love their laughs. But when they hit puberty, their serotonin goes down to adult level. So 100%, from 200%, this is adult level. Now we're an adult. But it, it's not stable. So it can, go, it can go down to 100, it can go to 50%, but it can go to zero too, okay? So it's when their serotonin hits zero, what do they want? They don't feel good. And this can happen to any kid, the pastor's kid, the best kid on the planet. But when their serotonin level drops, they're gonna do whatever it takes to get their serotonin up. One thing that does that, alcohol does it, drugs do it. Um, going out with your friends and doing crazy stuff does it. That's why it's so important when your kids hit puberty that you have a really good handle on what they're doing. and. They want to break away from their parents, but it may be the time where they need their parents the most. So it's really important to kind of keep them close by, get a boat, get horses, get whatever it takes to bring all the kids over to your house. So the fun happens there. They really, children, no matter if it's a girl or a boy, during puberty, they need a father. They need a father. Mothers are important. You're always going to be important. But that father needs to be spending one-on-one -on -one time with his teenage kids. And that needs to happen regularly. So, and I'm not going to get into all the reasons for that. But again, serotonin is so important. That's why your kids are in the shower for 45 minutes trying to get their serotonin up. When you see that happening, you need to take steps and say, I'm going to, whatever it takes, a candy bar bar at my house, a coffee bar. I'm not even promoting coffee, but if it gets the kids at your house, that's what you're trying to do. You're promoting fun. Um, so you have to do something at that point. Um, okay, how frequently should we shower? Every day. Every day, sometimes twice a day. <laughs> but do we have to soap up every time? No, remember, because when you put soap on, it takes the acid mantle. If you're having a second shower of the day and you haven't done that much, just just get in there and rinse off. Um, you don't have to always soap up, but I do recommend soaping at least once a day. Um, okay, so this was the part of my book I almost took out, but I, they said, no, you should keep it in there. So a good shower routine, play some nice music. If you can get outside and get some ground earthing before you shower and after you shower, that's a great thing. I will recommend doing, I will recommend against doing a niacin flush with a hot shower. 
Um, I learned something really interesting on myself, the large experimental lab rat here, that if I had washed my face with hot water and splashed maybe a little bit on my arms, on my chest, my neck, and then I took my niacin to get a flush, the part that flushed was the parts of my skin that had been exposed to hot water. So I could definitely see that pattern. And that's because you have temperature receptors on your skin and they can be either cold or hot. And the ones that had been exposed to hot were the ones that flushed. So kind of interesting. I don't necessarily recommend combining a flush with a shower. Um, there's fight and flight mode, that's sympathetic. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. You wanna be in the shower in rest and digest. And as I'm standing here, as you're sitting there, we're all expending energy to, to be upright. Our muscles are working. We're in, we're, we're kind of alert. When we go home tonight and go to bed, we'll get horizontal. And that horizontal posture tells the body it's safe to go into parasympathetic. And that's where your blood pressure drops and all these really great things happen in parasympathetic. When you go in the shower, just try leaning against the wall and letting the hot water hit your back. By the way, um, if you have a eucalyptus tree, take your eucalyptus branches, tie them together, put them in your hot shower. I start with hot, I end with cold, and sometimes I do alternating. Hot, cold, rosemary. Actually, the scent of rosemary improves your brain's ability to remember things. You can put lavender in your shower. These are great herbs to um, steam a little bit when you um, The other thing when you're washing your hair, you have, your hair has cuticles that open as it goes down the shaft. You don't want to wash up and, and wash the cuticle going the wrong way. You want to wash downward and that preserves your hair. It's a little bit better. Okay, so a, a, a mitt can actually scrub and get some of the dead skin off. I want to get to one of the most exciting things here. This is the cauda equina. This is your back and you have this bundle of nerves that comes right here and it just kind of goes down uh, each leg. And that's cauda equina stands for horse's tail. So you ladies that walk around with short shirts and your back exposed, if that part of your body gets cold, it's going to affect nerve transmission. So you want to keep that part of your body warm. It just makes everything work better. Water, you gotta drink water. The recommendations for water have gone up. Women, 95 ounces. Men, three ounces shy of a gallon, 125 ounces. That's a lot of water, men. Okay, so let's just keep going. This is talking about being clean. And I really think it's important to have a clean home. And I'm in this process. I'm not there yet of getting rid of my stuff. So this is just one example, it's not my home, but there's not a lot of stuff here. So it feels like you could just go in there and read a book and not have to worry about picking things up. Very simple, clean is, is good. Here's a clean kitchen, not necessarily my style of kitchen. I couldn't find, there's something about it. I can't get good images here. This is a very nice, clean, a few little knickknacks here and there, another clean area. Okay, so let's talk about non-toxic cleaners vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, lemon juice, barkeeper's friend, bleach, sunlight, UV light, borax, Dr. Bronner, elbow grease. Um, those are the cleaners I recommend. Uh, this is important. So time spent outdoors. So when you think about this, fresh air is oxygen therapy. You're getting oxygen. Well, I don't want to be in your pictures. I'm going to come back now. <laughs> you can see people taking pictures. So walking in the forest is forest bathing. As I walk under some of these trees, I can feel things coming down from the trees on me. These are beneficial compounds. They reduce blood pressure. Sunlight is vitamin D, proton therapy, improves sleep. Uh, contact with the earth is electron transfer. We're gonna talk about that, it's so important. Magnetic therapy, the earth is magnetic. When you're barefoot, you, con you contact that magnetism observing the stars that's studying nature god's second bible you do that in the country when you're in the city you don't see the stars like you see it in the country right how many of you live in the country and, and have a beautiful beautiful sky 
Um, yeah, growing flowers, the scent, the scent of flowers is olfactory and visual therapy because flowers, this is actually analog. Uh, you know, we can, we can see digital and we can see analog and the brain prefers nature's colors and not, anal and not digital colors. Uh, locate the best swimming hole. This is resource management, right? So the kids always figure out the best swimming hole. Um, growing food, nutrient therapy, eating food, taste and pleasure therapy, touching, kinesthetic therapy, lovingly caring for animals. That's what God, he gave us a lovely dominion over the animals, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do wanna get to this because this is so important. The human body is wired for action. It needs to move to recharge. When the body fails to move, its composition is altered and your body weight starts to change and your, excuse me, your metabolism changes and it's not necessarily for the better. In Bible times, people walked five to 10 to 20 miles a day. That's what we're geared for. We can do that. The human body is made to walk. To be aware of new videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the Preparing for the Time of Trouble channel. For more free videos and downloadable audio podcasts, as well as handouts, go to www.preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com. Topic categories include recordings of live seminar presentations, country living, sustainable gardening, homestead remedies, how to be self-sufficient when the grid goes down, wild edible and medicinal plants, hydrotherapy, and end-time Bible prophecies. To take advantage of these free resources, go to preparingforthetimeoftrouble.com.